If you're exercising, lifting weights in order to see more muscle definition, increase your lean muscle mass, decrease your body fat, the last thing you want to do is risk an injury. But there are a lot of mistakes that are common in at-home exercises. So whether you're at home doing these or you're at the gym doing these, these are all things you can do with dumbbells. But there are also little minor details that make all the difference in whether you get better results, you do it safely, and you avoid injury or not. So I'm going to show you these five, and then at the end, I'm going to do a call for questions on lower body exercises. So if you've got exercises you wonder if you're doing them correctly, this will get your wheels turning, and let's go. Whenever you're doing a long lever, like a shoulder raise, this is the air. Do you see what I'm doing? It's really about momentum. I can't hold it up there. I'm kind of coming down, coming up. Now, I could have exaggerated. I see it a lot worse. But what I really want you to focus on is being able to own and pause at the top. Do you see the difference? I can hold that. If I can hold it for a second, now I own it. That's my business to be using that. Showing it from the side because I want you to see you also have to be careful of not arching the back. Shoulder overhead press. All right, this one's risky for those of you with shoulder impingement issues. I'm also able or more likely to arch my back. Here's the change. Elbows come in front, stay at 90 degrees, and I like to press one at a time. You have much better odds of keeping that lower back stabilized and nice and straight. The other alternative is to sit right here because you have less to think about. Don't have to think about your knees being slightly bent, your pelvis tucked under. Sitting makes it a little bit easier. Okay, biceps and triceps. We all love those arms, but here's the risk. You're swinging. So if that's true for you, you've got to slow down and the weight may be a little bit too heavy for you or just remind yourself to look in the mirror and slow down. Slight bend of your knees, anchor through that pelvis. That means your core is turned on a little. Elbows at your sides giving you a hug. Triceps. So overhead press. I want you to see there are a couple errors. So elbows winging out to the side. I want you to bring those in safely because you're going to put less stress on your shoulders if you do so. So I also overhead want to demonstrate that it's easier again to arch the back. So either contract or sit down, making that much easier to keep the back straight because you have fewer levers to think about. Your arms are still getting a great workout. Your back is just not at risk. Bent over row. Love it for the back, but look at this problem here. You're upright. That means you're not working the right muscles. So we need that hinge at the hip to be much lower, closer between 45 and 90 degrees so that your muscles in the back face the ceiling. Here's another option. I'm showing with two arms. One arm or two arms are very appropriate. You could use a bench or a hand on a bench to stabilize if you wanted to do that. If you can't, sit down. Again, that removes some of the details you have to think about. So while you're beginning, the work to this working muscle group is just the same. You don't lose anything and you reduce risk. While we're on upper body, let's do chest press and bent arm pullover. Demonstrating several different options for dumbbell chest press here. I'm on a slight incline. This could also be on a flat bench. I'm gonna demonstrate here bilaterally. That means a weight in both hands. We're moving them simultaneously. And I'm doing about five reps here. And then I'm gonna continue on with a set that is really 15 repetitions, but watch how different they get. Now I'm gonna stabilize my left while I'm moving my right arm. Notice that it's important when you're lifting just one arm, that weight has an arc to it. So you are coming out to the side and in and up. So you're still over the chest, protecting that shoulder as you're doing it. There's gonna be a little fatigue now in the left arm as it goes. It was stabilizing, it wasn't on vacation. You're pressing up and again, it comes up and over the chest. The right arm's already a little fatigued from moving, but now is asked to stabilize. This makes it a very functional kind of exercise. Imagine any activity of daily life. You're holding the groceries with one arm, closing and opening doors with the other, holding a child. We do things more like that than moving at the same time. Last five alternates 
Don't get in a hurry on this one. It's right up and down, then left up and down. I want to show you another variation. If you have the time doing unilateral work with nothing in the other hand, forces your core to work a little bit harder because the rest of your body has to balance out for the fact there isn't something on the other side. I'm demonstrating a bent arm pullover. All the action, the movement happens from the shoulder. Notice the elbows are not flexing and extending. They're just held in a mild flexion and then lower from the shoulder. The work is targeting big muscles in the back, the latissimus dorsi. A lot of women will say they don't feel it there, but try to focus on that finger-like muscles that insert into your side waist. You will also feel it in your core, and this is not wrong. You're doing it just fine. You may feel it in your triceps because the muscle over the tricep also covers your shoulder. Go slowly down, bring it back just to the chest. Okay, now you've seen it. Let's do a quick review. Number one, speed. It's not your friend. You can do power, meaning lifting quickly, if you can own it and pause at the end. If you have to go up and down, and that's all you can do, the weight is too heavy. So if you want real work and real muscle with lower risk of ligaments and connective tissue injuries, you're gonna come up slowly, own that for a second, and lower it down under control. When you're doing those lateral or front raises also, thumbs are a little bit higher than your pinkies. Rocking and arching the back. So remember, we don't wanna arch. That'll happen whenever weights come up and over your head. It's much more likely that's in a tricep press or it's in that shoulder press. So be sure first you're engaged and you come up one at a time or you come up and you're really consciously thinking this is core exercise as much as it's arm exercise. Then when you're doing a bent over row, you wanna make sure the muscles of your back are facing the ceiling. So you're resisting gravity there. If you're too upright, you're working the shoulders more than you're working the back. Again, the neutral spine. So down here, we're not looking for this rounded back. We're looking for tailbone out, chest forward, and this position. There you have it. All right, I wanna know, what are your questions about your lower body and any follow-ups here? Don't forget to subscribe and ding the bell so that you get notified when there's a new video. Hey, I'm Deborah Atkinson. I am the founder of Flipping 50, and most of the time these days, you can find me behind the scenes of this microphone recording podcast for the Flipping 50 show. But for the last 40 years, I've been in the front lines either as a medical exercise specialist working with someone with special conditions like arthritis, osteoporosis, which, which isn't so special anymore, <laughs> or someone who's working on diabetes or heart failure. I've seen it all over my 40 years. Or if I'm working as a strength and conditioning coach, working with a specific athlete for a sport, whether that's an age group athlete, a high school collegiate, or world-class triathlete, Everybody wants a better performance. We want to look better and feel better, even if our performance is just in day-to-day -day life. So pay attention to these little details. It is the details that matter. And we have the ability to change the way we age. We need strength training. And if you're at all afraid of the fear of getting hurt when you lift weights, there's a far greater risk that you'll be hurt if you're not lifting weights. We need the strength and we need the stimulus from strength training or weight training to take up where estrogen left off as muscle and bone stimulus. Now's the time to raise the ceiling on the way all of us age. And we will be the first generation to do it and to pass it on to our daughters and our daughters-in-law and those younger people that we influence. So leave your questions and your comments below and Let's change the world and the way that we all age.